But will the judges like his lamb, offal and veg? I think, I think yours remind... looks better than mine. Mine's got too much um, I asked garden on top. I must say, talk about generous portion. Mm. I tell you what this looks like. It, this looks as if you know, the animal from which all this stuff was taken is grazing on the hill on which it was <laughs> fed, isn't it? And... I'm not sure oh, I yeah. see this as, you know, frankly, as being hugely cutting edge 21st century. I mean, this well, is. Well, I a... mean, the lamb is absolutely delicious, though. Is it? Yeah. All right. That is stonking good lamb. I mean, very good lamb, fabulous lamb. And it, I have to say, mm. for me, is speaking personally, it's just a joy to see offal on the menu. Absolutely. Yeah. And lots of it. It is good to see sweetbreads. It's good to see Barnsley Char. And tongue. You know, and and tongue. kidneys. And kidney. I mean, kidneys. I love kidneys too. I mean, the problem you got here, I think, is it's a, it's a, vo it's a volume issue, really. You know, the, too much. Uh, there's just too much happening. We have got a problem that, you know, a lot of very critical, very skilled international three-star Michelin chefs will I say, that's what my granny can do. And I got to be honest with you. I want to meet your. I would like to <laughs> oh, meet your granny. Know, you know, know, she just spent two or three days making that. So once again, Tom's getting criticised for his mammoth-sized portions, but the flavours hit the right note. Across the kitchen, Matt's almost ready to serve his main course. He's cooking loin of Scottish lamb wrapped in a bread crust with fresh asparagus and balsamic baby beetroot. Despite being Matt's arch rival, Tom voices the reservations he had about the dish when he tasted it on Wednesday. The only thing I thought was maybe it needed a little bit more sauce in the, uh, in the lamb because the bread absorbs liquid, you know. My only problem with that is I'm thinking that the too much sauce in the plate and it will uh, soak onto that, and soak into the bread really quickly. But we'll rectify that. Will he though? No, Matt really doesn't want to serve it soggy and ignores Tom's advice. Right, guys, I need this out nice and quickly. The essence of this dish is the, that the bread crust is crispy. And the first impressions from the judges are... It's Lamb Wellington. Yes, the first thing that strikes me about this dish is the, uh, how unsummary it looks. Asparagus on some No, what the dish looks doesn't look very similar. I think it looks lovely, and it's not too much. Well, it's a firm, it's, a, it's actually rather a nice crust. It's, because it's bread, which is rather than mm. pastry, it's crunchy. Mm. And inside there's a little mousse of uh, chicken mousse, which chicken, yeah. helps, it's rather like it's fat, good. layer of fat. Mm. It's good. Very good. It, it tastes very nice, but... Uh, the Such quality of the lamb is nowhere near as good mm. as the last lamb. Mind you, this is a jolly good trick. I'm going to, I'm going to adopt mm. it. I like this. Mm. Mm. What the bread business the bread around bread. the outside. <laughs> yes, I know. The combination of flavours is very good. You know, it works well yeah. as, a, as, a, as a combination. What I'm not wholly convinced by is this combination of asparagus and the beetroot good in balsamic vinegar. Because... You just lose the flavour of the asparagus completely. I really quite like a bit of gravy. I mean, there's practically nothing here, just a bit of beetroot and balsamic juice. It, it looks a little bit dry as a dish, doesn't it? Uh, I, uh, this strikes me as being kind of um, cardigan and carpet slippers dish. You know, it's comfortable, it's easy, it's just, oh, settled down to it. It doesn't. Uh, it's a bit of Scottish tweed, you know, designed to mould.